I generally like to do videos in the morning, but I'll, I'll be completely honest. I, I assume it has to do with the driving yesterday, but I was absolutely exhausted, even this morning when I woke up. Um, Addie and Ava and I didn't get home until 12.45, so Addie jumped in my bed and, of course, tossed and turned all I'm night. Gonna do it again. No, you're not going to do it again. You're going to sleep in your bed. Uh, <laughs> tossed and turned all night. I don't know what it was, but I woke up this morning and it just felt like I hadn't slept at all. Got to get going. I wanted to go and look at Mountaineer Prince. I wanted to go and look at a number of horses in the barn today. Um, got a racing next week. They were trying to get ready to go. So I had to go. Went to the barn. Tired all... <laughs> tired all day. And uh, got it all done. I was happy. Uh, Dr. Latessa had said he figures he figured out what was wrong with... Uh, Maddie, turn that down, honey. Uh, with Mountaineer Prince. He said he thought that his left hawk uh, was a little sore and his left stifle was a little weak. Which makes sense because the first day he arrived here, back here, left line hard. Now, uh, we made a few shoeing adjustments. Tomorrow is the day that we're going to find out how Mountaineer Prince actually is. If he graduated from his his school week or not. Um, we're going to train him tomorrow morning in the race bike. And I'm also going to train the priest in the race bike. I know a couple of my partners saying, Addy, turn that down. A couple of my partners saying, um, you know what, can we not just send the priest to Indiana? Simple answer, no. We can't send him to Indiana if he's not ready to go. I know everybody just wants to see the horses go out and see them in to go and see them in the program and watch them go and win. It doesn't work that way. They'll be ready to go when they're ready to go. And, and uh, this is whether it's a priest who should be ready to go right now, and I, I fully expect he is, or um, a horse like Melisandre, who just isn't ready to go yet. Captain Incredible, who's ready to rock now, I think. Every horse is different. When we get to when we get to that, well, we watch them. You guys know how closely we watch them all throughout the winter and into the spring. But as we start to get to May, they really have to be ready or they're not. And that may sound very black and white and very matter of fact, but there's no point trying to fake that they're ready or pushing them when they're not ready. They will tell us when they're ready. And when it comes to the priest, the allergies have really taken a hold of him. And now his nose looked good today. He's been eating everything. He has no temperatures, no sickness. So show me tomorrow. I'm going to train him in Mountaineer Prince tomorrow morning. Now, uh, I heard good reports out of Ontario from my spy, Amy. She went down to Mohawk today and watched uh, Prince's Dream, Gaslight Hall, Cleveland Masha. Uh, I'm missing uh, another horse. Anyway, everybody that was uh, everybody that was on their way to the races went to Mohawk today. Went a mile in two nine, I think, with everyone. She said Princess looked great. Uh, Gaslight Hall, she mentioned, looked great a couple of times. So I'm thinking he looked extra good. Um, but everybody trained well, and I was very happy to hear that. I think I'm missing somebody. I know for sure I am. Cleveland Masha, uh, Princess Dream, and Gasly Hall trained together. Uh, or no, Princess Dream, Gasly Hall. Anyway, for those of you out there, my partner's on that horse that's missing. That horse trained well, too. It'll probably come to me in a second. Uh, yes, Trevino on green. Trained in 2-5 again. And a per another perfect example. Here's a horse that is five seconds from being pretty competitive in a, in a in a grassroots race and probably could bump along and get his work done. But when I look at a big, good-looking, strong colt whose sister did so good for us, it's not that he doesn't have ability. It's not that he doesn't have a good work, work ethic or good attitude. He does. He's big. Clunks along and, you know, forges a little bit. I'm not going to... Uh, beat him up. I'm not going to race him if he's not ready to race. And, and this has been ongoing for four or five weeks. I, I told Danny a month ago, you can change his shoes however you want. My feeling was he was just simply too big and immature right now. That was my feeling. But you're never right all the time. Danny thought that he could maybe shoo him, around, shoo him around, help him out. I said, you have carte blanche. You do as you wish with Trevino on green. Report back every time he trains and tell me how he is. Let me know what you think. Now, he trained good today. He said one more adjustment he wanted to make. And the thing I love about Danny, and, and you should love it about him too, is that he's tenacious, right? Danny, 
He's an older gentleman. Now, he's not old. But he's definitely a lot older than me. And loves the game, loves to learn from the game, and, and loves to experiment, right? Much like I do. A lot of the stuff, remember, I tell you guys, it's trial and error, right? So with Trevino on green, it's trial and error. So we're trying to get Trevino on green trotting good. Am I optimistic he'll be racing soon? No, I'm not at all. But at the same time, don't give up on this horse. He's a good-looking, strong colt. And after watching the way our horses matured last winter into this year, some not at all, some were just as good, but some really, really did. And it was really impressive to watch. So I'm hoping the latter will be the file that Trevino on green falls into. Now, today we did have some racing. I was so tired. I get home, and Addy was actually nice to me today. We get home, what, we get back. Well, then it's not a at, at one o'clock, we got back at, no, I'll tell you when it was. It was at uh, 20 after 12, because it was five minutes to post in Green Glitter's race. And I said, Addy, if I'm in bed and watch your, tea, watch your phone for a second, we're gonna go swimming, but just give me a minute to catch my breath. Hour and a half, I slept. <laughs> she taps me on the head. Are you done napping yet? <laughs> I got up. I felt 95%. Still a little tired, but 95%. And realized that I had missed everybody at the Meadows. So I back and watched the races and, and Philadelphia. Green Glitter, it was always that question, is she good enough? Now, Tim said she scoped with a little bit of mucus. He thought she was getting sick. Tim is, is also an eternal optimist. And when it comes to... Um, when it comes to Green Glitter, I think she's just a nice filly. she a killer? No. Not a killer. But she is a nice filly. And I think she can do in the Stallion Series. Now she's 0 for 2. She missed the first one. Was 6th in the second one. Um, I am more apt to say, let's just hang around the meadows for now. Uh, get a 2-year-old mark on her. And if, and if she comes up flat again the next time we race her in the Stallion Series, or in any series, or any race, I just pull the plug and turn her out. I do want to see the horses see, you know, and, and the reason I'm doing this also is one, I've seen all these movies before, right? When they're not good, they're just not good. Not much you can do about it. They're not good enough, I mean. There's always going to be a spot to race a uh, green glitter, right? Or a Trevino on green, depending on how he comes back. There's always going to be a place for them. What you want to do is find the best form of that horse. And I had preached to you guys that it never would have dawned on me to race three-year-olds that we have any aspirations of stakes with in January. It just doesn't happen. It's not done in the industry. You turn them out, you bring them back, you take your time, you get them ready in March. Well, you've foregone, you're foregone, I think that's a word, you've foregone a lot of uh, a lot of stakes in doing that, right? Or a lot of races, overnight races. You know, you look at a horse like Blanton's Blue and how well he did throughout the winter racing into the stake season. Horse did really good, right? We're looking for horses, maybe not even quality horses, that horses that can give us quality starts in any sort of in any sort of class throughout the winter into the spring. So these horses that just aren't quite going to be stake material right now, that's okay. They might be quality animals for us that can give us quality starts in the wintertime. There's nothing wrong with that. And the one thing we also did prove, at least so far it appears, with time is on my side, is that you can race a horse in December, January, rest them a little bit, bring them back, rest them again, bring them back and have a, a little more of a fragmented year. And I never thought you could do that. Now, maybe that's just time is on my side. I don't know, but it's a very interesting prospect and it gives us, it opens up some avenues for us with these horses. So Green Glitter, yeah, she was okay today. Probably trotted 59 in a bit, two minutes. It's not quite good enough. Not from what I can see. Patrick the Piranha. 150 off a half and 56. Pretty tough to advance into that mile. Eight hole. I don't really have to explain that too much. I thought the horse raced rather well. Uh, probably paced 51 in a piece. Look good doing it. This is a time. Uh, one second. You got a runny nose? Here. I got just the thing for that. Oh, Papa John hooked us up with some napkins. Um, Patrick, this is the time of year Patrick the Piranha shone last year too. So what I saw today was a pretty pretty strong third quarter and a decent last quarter. Draw the inside, get similar fractions, get a run at these guys, and I think you're going to see a big mile from Patrick the Piranha. Lonely Lake, what I said to Tim, I, you know, that's a tougher bunch. Straight non winners a three four, no problem. We can soften the blow. He can go right here, and the non winners a two condition claimer. Where 
all those other horses raced and did well. We're looking for a horse to fit right in there anyway. So I think there's a big opening for Lonely Lakewood, and he'll fit in nicely next week here at Northfield Park. I'm on my way now. I'm going to get a pulp, for those of you who don't know. Pulp Juice Bar is right behind me. I'm going to get Lauren, uh, Jason, and myself a pulp. And I am going to uh, go race our, our boys. I don't play nice. Cadeau, Bluebird Tuxedo Hill. He's a great guy, although we have sold him. We are going to race him. And LT Troubadour. George of the Jungle, race our only starter in Ontario and our only starter from Indiana tonight. I This will be the one I'm watching. Widespread panic. I can't wait to watch this horse race. They say he's been quiet and jogging well, but they jog early in the morning in Indiana. Let's see how he is at 10 o'clock at night with eight other horses or nine other horses lined up in the gate with him. I I may buy some popcorn. Anyway, I will talk to you all soon. I, <laughs> I hope you're having a great day. As I said, I was zapped this morning. Starting to come around. Catching my second wind. Take care.